Sand Hall, can I invite you to speak? I'm on Durrell land, always was, always will be. Um, and tonight is a particularly good one for this sort of women's business. It's a new moon or rather dark moon in Taurus with a partial sun eclipse. So an influence supporting feminist values, art, beauty, appreciation of nature and feminine qualities. So may our feminist revolutionary juices flow tonight and our revolutionary values. The trans agenda has plagued me for the last 30 years. Prior to 1994, I organized lesbian festivals, gatherings, concerts, community and cultural events. The idea was to have fun and nourish ourselves. Lesbian and feminist activism is challenging work. We need the fun times. Lesbian feminists live knowing the personal is political and we understand the need to combine business with pleasure. I love the energy of gatherings of women. They nourish my soul. The trans movement is a men's right movement, rights movement that has given men who simply self-declared themselves as women the right to access all women's spaces and speak for all women. I'm sure patriarchy could not be more delighted with its success. They happily funded and changed laws to enable it. All too suddenly, it became illegal for me to organize events for women without allowing men who say they are women to attend. In 2006, Sappho's party, a lesbian gathering in South Australia, was taken to the South Australian Anti-Discrimination Board by a man claiming to be a lesbian who felt excluded. The law was on his side. We have gone underground. The impact on lesbians has been the loss of freedom of association. Lesbian spaces have been lost and an underground movement largely inaccessible to new and emerging lesbians was formed. New and emerging lesbians lost access to culture and elders. Our human rights, freedom of speech and so much more has been decimated. Everyone's fear of saying the emperor has no clothes on and the nonsense notion that an XY chromosome person can become an XX chromosome person have removed feminist role models from several generations of gender non-conforming women. Trans and queer misogyny and brainwashing is leading to young butch lesbians thinking they have little choice but to cut off their breasts and take testosterone for the rest of their lives in order to be safe and fit in. My blood boiled recently when I read Max Robinson's excellent book, Detransition, Beyond, Before and After, published by Spinifex Press. It's scary to see the huge growth in women transitioning. Max had cut off her breasts and took testosterone before finding out that lesbian feminist community existed at which point her life made sense and she detransitioned. 31 years ago, I was part of organizing a sold out lesbian Sydney Opera House concert. Thousands of lesbians attended a 10 day national festival and conference. There was an atmosphere of euphoria and such diversity. Personally, I tend to identify as femme with a butch moon and androgyny rising. We all bent gender to suit ourselves. After the concert, we formed the Lesbian Space Project and went on to raise big money and bought a lesbian building in Newtown, Sydney. It was to be used as a lesbian cultural and community center. During this time, the trans invasion began. And in the process of achieving anti-discrimination legislation walked roughshod over the Sydney lesbian community. This invasion divided our community and led to the sale of that building and an enormous loss of identity, community and visibility. For me, the key issue was about whether men who say they are women could be members of the Lesbian Space Project and therefore have power and control. The issue was not about access to the centre so much as it was about membership. Since then, the anti-feminist, queer and trans movements have continued to remove women's and lesbians' human rights in favour of trans rights. 
They've hoodwinked nearly everyone everywhere through threats and the silencing of good women. This has led to the loss of our national festivals and conferences. We cannot publicly advertise gatherings for women born female. Lesbian is intrinsically female. They have tried to rebrand us with a new flag, new symbols and derogatory names such as TERF, trans extraordinary radical feminists. They have given false meaning to the word lesbian. I have no problem with gender bending. My issue was, is with space invasion and the incredibly shallow thinking that conflates sex and gender. Sex is biological and innate. Gender is a social construct and can be very fluid. Last weekend, I attended a women's spirituality weekend, not lesbian women. Numbers were low and it ran at a loss because women were afraid to be called transphobic simply by attending a women's event. If we follow the money and power, as Susan Hawthorne did in her excellent book, Vortex, The Crisis of Patriarchy, again, Spinifex Press, it leads to the billionaires and the political power they wield. It leads to pharmaceutical companies and the medical establishment generally. Trans people are dependent on drugs and medical support for life. It goes to the core of patriarchy, their determination to control women and their fear of women's independence, particularly lesbians and radical feminists, women who relentlessly call out male violence and abuse and who control our own, our own bodies and lives. We keep saying the emperor has no clothes on. We keep challenging this fetish of autogynophilia, men who get off sexually on being perceived as women, dressing as women, being accepted as women. It's a very real part of what is happening. These are truly weird and crazy times. And when it comes to the human rights of women and children in particular. The parallels are there with the war in, UK, in Ukraine, cultural genocide. I find the word culture a difficult one to use these days. Cults have structures and rules with punishment if broken. It's everywhere. We continue to stay our course of women's liberation. We hold the line on who women are and the intrinsically female nature of lesbians. The madness and lies are gradually being exposed with education, research, science, and the bravery of women. There are brave women such as those here tonight who will not be silenced. And gradually the tide of ignorance is turning. It's heartening for me to see the resurgence of the lesbian organization Cole, of whom I see that there are several committee members and members here tonight. The Coalition of Activist Lesbians Australia is a lesbian human rights organization that gained United Nations accreditation in 1993 in order to participate in the 1995 Fourth United Nations World Conference on Women in Beijing. I was one of the lesbians who, thanks to federal funding, and yes, it was when there was a Keating government and Carmen Lawrence was Minister for Health, we got funding to attend, Cole got funding to attend that, that UN conference. We represented Australian lesbians at the NGO forum and the conference itself. And while there, I also represented lesbians of the Asia Pacific region on the coordinating group of the lesbian tent at the NGO forum. That tent was the first time there was lesbian space in China and in United Nations territory. It was also the last time. There has not been a women's conference since then. And after the conference, some delegates, generally males, returned home to African countries and mainly and Sri Lanka and had legislation put in place to criminalize lesbianism. It is also heartening to see at the recent United Nations CSW 66 conference in New York that CEDAW, the Committee to Eliminate Discrimination Against Women, are voicing, are voicing support for a Sri Lankan lesbian who is spearheading the removal of the criminal status of lesbians, not only in Sri Lanka, but via CEDAW and the UN in all 43 countries that currently criminalize lesbian sexual activity. 
For myself in more recent times, I've been publishing books of our stories, books that go to libraries and universities. I've just started putting the call out for contributions to a third collection of stories and photos from women involved over the past 50 years with the women's lands in New South Wales. For 45 years, I've been part of the women's lands in Northern New South Wales. Now, as a photographer, I have thousands of photos of all sorts of women's and lesbian events I've been part of over the decades, including the women's lands. It has been satisfying to publish some of them and not just think they need to be archived. The two previous books have provided researchers, the media, searching women and historians with a point of reference for stories of gender non-conforming women. Women who use chainsaws, sleep under stars and around fires, drive four-wheel drives and build shelters, make music and theatre, have feasts and adventures. Women who have no need of surgery or hormones to experience freedom and independence. Of course, the utopian vision is fraught with dysfunction and conflict, but Landis' life and sisterhood is powerful. And I also like Bronwyn Winter's term feminist solidarity, which can be used instead of sisterhood. There's a conversation to be had about the nuances of sisterhood and feminist solidarity. I like Robin Morgan's definition of ethical governance as the virtuosity with which we practice gossip. There is much to be gained from the benefit of hindsight and vision and the analyzing of power and relationships. Self-publishing books is a tangible way to share and educate. It's led to the making of programs on Radio National's History Listen series. Also a forum as part of the IWD All About Women series at the Opera House oral history recordings and various inquiries from filmmakers, researchers and historians. Last night, I Zoomed with a couple of women interested in turning some of the stories into a TV series, drama series for SBS. Now, I don't know about that one, but the interest is out there. And if there are visible leads to follow, um, connections can happen. In finishing, Although the United Nations is a bit of a toothless tiger, I have always believed that the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights is the best vehicle to be working with for women's, children and lesbian human rights. Part of my daily practice in life is to tune in to the spirit of humanity and, and ride the fun that can be had on those waves.